Somebody was wearing a suspend disbelief shirt last, last night. Yes. Oh, suspenders of awesome. suspenders. Heather suspenders. and Greg were there. Yes. Suspenders of disbelief. <laughs> Welcome back to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast, where each week we go back, way back. We're in season five, episode two. We're pumped. We got Tom in the studio. Bryce is here. Bryce never can be seen. He's an anomaly. Most people think he's a myth, but he's here in the studio. Oh, no, he's real. He's sitting next to me. Uh, You can't see him, but you can hear him, right, Bryce? That's right. Yeah, that's right. And we're very excited. It's fun having all these guys here. It just makes it more fun. I wish Tom lived closer. Um, Without you guys... We wouldn't be here. So if you uh, are supporting the show on Patreon, if you're a patron, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, Patreon.com slash Talkville. Join, support us, keep us going, and we'll keep doing this. Um, If you didn't get a chance to call in our hotline, leave a question for this episode. Make sure you do it for future ones. All that and more is down in the uh, show's description. And uh, got a great episode today. And uh, make sure you go to TalkvillePodcast.com and you can get great merch. Also inside of you, um, online store has like ship keys signed and Lexmas scripts and all that. So there's so much cool stuff. And uh, Tom and I will be at some cons. So look on my Instagram at the Michael Rosenbaum, my link tree. We're at some cons, uh, Washington state. Um, I, I don't think this will air then this will be later, but we'll be in uh, New Jersey for the Smallville con. So That's get tickets one. for that. That's, That's a big, big one. one and keep uh, we're on cameo and it's all that almost stuff. Sold out actually. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, all right, without further ado, let's get into season five, episode two. This one's called Brutal, uh, Mortal. Mortal. It's called Mortal. <laughs> but it is brutal. <laughs> Title Mortal. October 6, 2005, Terrence O'Hara directed this one, written by Stephen S. DeKnight, who I love. Guest star Kenneth Johnson is Tommy Lee, The Shield. He was in SWAT. Camille Mitchell is Sheriff Nancy Adams. Todd Mann is twin one. Brad Mann is twin two. Those weird twins. They were in Fargo, or Brad Mann was anyway. As Clark tries to assimilate to a normal life, convicts from Bell Reef threaten his loved ones and force him to do the seemingly impossible. It's okay, Bryce. Twins aren't weird. I know. I was watching this like, oh, God. <laughs> Those guys were weird. Bryce is having the one guy was really coming. They're not going to turn out like that. It's going to be okay. <laughs> the one guy was weird. <laughs> the, ahead, w- the one twin was the weird? The one identical the twin one. was weird. <laughs> This episode opens in a familiar scenario with one Luther visiting another Luther inside Belle Reeve. This time it's Lionel who's in the padded room despite their bumpy history. Lex seems to show true concern and care over his catatonic father. As Lex leaves through the halls, he conveniently bumps into Tommy Lee. Not that Tommy Lee, but an inmate with electrical powers. He's able to break free from his constraints, dismantle the guards, and free a couple other inmate twins who have the ability to create force fields. Having left high school, we were curious how they would introduce new bad guy freaks, and looks like this is it. They're going to use Bell Reeve, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, kind of like Arkham Asylum and Batman. Don't yeah. Mm-hmm. There's your Batman reference. Back over in Smallville, we see the town rallying together to rebuild after being destroyed by a meteor shower yet again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on Smallville. And as Clark learns to deal with being mortal, Chloe learns to deal with Clark not wanting more uh, for his life than milking cows and chasing Lana. Tom. So are they rebuilding the Kent barn here? Or That's what they're else doing. They're rebuilding Kent's. There's lots of yeah, the whole town is coming in to just rebuild the Kent farm. I mean, I, I get the whole I, Amish reference. I would have loved this for is them a, to this cut is to not... one Amish guy, just like who's helping. <laughs> just yeah. I mean, this, but this is not the Kent location. This is not their Kent farm. No, it's, well, it's not the Kent farm because Lana and Clark go to the Kent farm. Oh uh, yeah, right. so they're just rebuilding somewhere it's else. A neighbor. They're helping out. Yeah. Well, so that's good at least. But also, I missed something here as an actor. Like Clark obviously can like put like power drive things into the ground pretty quickly, but it still takes him seven times to hit a nail in. Well, he's being normal. He lost his powers. He lost his powers. Remember, he's bleeding in the last episode. Oh, good point. So now he's a real person. So he's enjoying being normal. Now he's just an idiot. (laughs) Lex Lex interrupts a wholesome moment between Lana and Clark to ask Clark for a third chance. But Clark isn't so cheery about the idea. Clark leaves to go on an errand with Lana and asks for a fifth second chance. Lana attempts to open up about her murderous past, but Clark wants them to keep the past 
in the past. And the two Kansas kids attempt to take a detour in Pound Town on their way to back to the construction site. Clark asks to take things slow, and Lana tells him what they've been doing for the past four years. <laughs> in this scene, Clark tells Lana that she's been the only one he's ever loved. Ever, Lana. It's you. It's always been you. And Jason really didn't uh, seal the deal on that, did he? You don't think they ever made love? Well, that's what that's she what said. She said. I don't believe she it. She's lying. You're in Paris with some hot dude. I thought it kind of would have been. I don't know. I thought. She's kind of a prude. So. Would it would have been if interesting if, like, no, I thought it would have been more interesting, like, had she actually not been a virgin and Clark was a virgin, then it would have, the power dynamic would have shifted a little bit. Hmm. I thought, you know, I thought that could have been interesting. But Their oh well. first time gets interrupted, presumably by Clark's parents. However, hmm. it turns out to be the Bell Reeve escapees. The twins use a forced field to pin Clark to the roof of the barn. And Tommy Lee Jones tells him that everyone inside Bell Reeve has been t talking about Clark. And he has come to find out what the hubbub is about. The Bell Reeve Motley crew. <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. <laughs> take Lana and Clark captive inside their, the under construction Kent house. Tommy Lee licks Lana and begins beating on Clark, noticeably disappointed that he isn't living up to the hype inside Bell Reeve. In typical bad, <laughs> bad guy form, we see Tommy Lee light up a cigarette, maybe for the first time in the entire series. Yeah, they have these fake cigarettes that look real and you can smoke they them. They smell horrible. They're clothes. They're terrible. They're, they're terrible. Was there a cigarette ban on TV for a while? Because everybody did it? And then like oh, like real cigarettes, right? You can't or do it on network TV, I don't think, but you can on streamers. Yeah, there, there's now. something I don't remember what it is, but there's I something. I think you never see cigarettes. It's so stupid. They what, it's like, what, what they do. Doing? What you do learn as an actor that if, if you're eating or smoking or drinking in a scene, you want to either start the scene with that or end with it, but don't do it throughout because the editing becomes very difficult. Yeah. So that is something that they don't teach an actor do class. They burn but you slower learn on, then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like there's Al Pacino scenes in like I forget what movie it is. And like every time they cut to him, the cigarette is like at different distances, <laughs> like less and more in the same scene. Cause like he didn't care. I think I smoke a cigarette in one episode coming up or, or some. Really? Yeah. It's like kind of a noir Lex episode. Did? Oh yeah. I think I did. I don't, I don't remember. It's called I, noir. I, I, I like that episode. episode. Yeah. <laughs> I hated it. I liked it because it was different. I mean, I just always liked everything that was different. I, you know, cause... it was funny is I remember trying something and it didn't work, so I stopped doing it. And it was like kind of like an accent, like because I remember we were older then. We we're like, oh, because you're like James Cagney. And, and I, I was like, trying to do something hey, like, buddy, I, go, I got. I was trying number. to do something, and I, I, I think I ADR'd it because I was like, no, you gotta let me ADR this back to normal. <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, Lana, oh, I see look, you, Sonny. Look, Lana. Yeah. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take <laughs> you for a ride. That's what I'm gonna do. You hear? Now yeah. Put an egg in your shoe and beat it. Yeah. I got one word for you. Scram. All of a sudden, Chloe's here. Yeah. And she's like, hey, yeah. guys. Because <laughs> well, she's got to be. She has a car. She can get anywhere she needs to be. Chloe le leaves to run an errand on her own. She heads to the caves and starts speaking her inner thoughts about Clark, conveniently loud enough for the onlooking Lex Luthor to hear. He begins to talk about the last time they were in the caves and the cheap shot that knocked him out. Chloe continues to play dumb and flips the interrogation back onto Lex about his spaceship cover-up. Lex delivers a cold line here saying being a third wheel is very time consuming. Yeah, I like that. You liked it? Yeah. It's a good. Oh, good. He, he wasn't saying it for Lex. And that's the, when you talk about ambiguity and saying things, but you mean something else, you nailed it on when you did that. Cause you're, you're saying it, but it's not for you. It's for her. Mm. So I'm well, tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the funhouse, Clark notices a level three tattoo on Tommy Lee and begins to ask him about the top secret kryptonite testing that was going on in Luther Corp. Here we get the motive for why they are enlisting Clark's help uh, to get their fix of more kryptonite serum that they were being fed while at level three before being dis being discarded in Bell Reeve. Similarities to uh, MK Ultra testing. I kept waiting for Tommy Lee to say no, that in like the 60s, 70s. It's like they're testing like LSD on. Oh, yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, yeah But yeah. I kept waiting for him to, like, all, all of a sudden be like, and I haven't heard from my little brother who used to fix up cars for, for <laughs> Sam Jones. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. that, that saying crew, remember what that kryptonite yeah. crew? Yeah. From, like, season two, yeah. I thought, like, this oh, is their older fun. brother yeah. in a way. Yeah. Martha and Jonathan return home asking why Clark didn't return with the nails. After seeing their son disheveled, they assume the nailing was happening somewhere else. <laughs> Tommy and the twins appear from around the corner, start jawing at Jonathan, and then hand blast him across the room. They give Clark two hours to bring the serum back or else. And Clark enlists Chloe to go on the covert mission to steal serum from Luther Corp. So they make 
haste in the discreet red v- Volkswagen bug. She whips out her laptop and looks up www.publicrecords to identify where level three could be located inside the building. You know, it's funny because we're here at your house in Los Angeles and having visited here, I'm reminded of the traffic and how long it takes to get six miles. And the fact that these guys are so polite to say, you have two hours to get this done. Yeah, how about you have 20 minutes? Here in LA, you'd be like, you have 48 hours <laughs> to get to Santa Monica and back with the serum. Yeah. <laughs> Clark admits to having little to no useful skills for the heist compared to what he used to be able to do. However, Chloe is able to deploy her hacker I kind of wanted Clark to, to just kind of like step up and fight this guy. I mean, he, you know. Uh, I mean, mm. yeah. I kind of wanted him to do it. but Chloe you know, and Clark go full Mission Impossible inside the out. air vents until they trigger some blocking me- uh, mechanism that nearly causes Clark to fall from the ceiling. In this scene, Chloe finds out that Pete knew his secret before she was told. Or was it more Die Hard? Was that exciting for you to do a little Die Hard? Oh, I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, you were doing a little Don McLean there. Oh. Venting. Hmm. Venting your uh, action star. Yeah. Yeah. Back on the Kent farm, Tommy gets paranoid as the sheriff drives up with her sirens on. Looking for the escaped convicts from Belle Reve, Jonathan and Lana play dumb in an attempt to get her to leave. However, the sheriff notices a pack of cigs and can't believe Johnny would smoke up with his heart condition. I just imagine the sheriff going, we have this situation. Okay, let's pull the file on the person who's always involved in everything. The kids. <laughs> let's go there first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're involved well, in by everything. By the way, that at least is some credibility there. Yeah. That's, uh, I get it. <laughs> Talkville is brought to you by NHTSA. We all know about the speed of sound, but have you ever thought about the sounds of speeding? If you drive over the speed limit, there are a lot of sounds that you might hear. You can hear the sound of your vehicle crashing, the sound of first responders desperately trying to save you. You could even hear the sound of people crying at a funeral. Because if you drive over the speed limit, you could do damage that's beyond repair. One way or another, speeding catches up with you. Paid for by NHTSA. Talkville is brought to you by Mint Mobile. You know, I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals. And all these companies make you do that just to save a few bucks. It's got to be easy, Tom. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called them on it. It turns out it really is that easy to get wireless for 15 bucks a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. Isn't that a hoot? Uh, these guys are great. To get started, all you got to do is go to mintmobile.com slash talkville. There you'll see that right now, all three-month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan. What? All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. I can't believe 15 bucks it's, a month. This is ridiculous. That's insane. I wish I had this <laughs> when I just, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, you're saving a lot of money I here. I think I'm gonna get another phone. To get this new customer offer and your new three month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash talkville. That's mintmobile.com slash talkville. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash talkville. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for details. The sheriff doesn't buy it, calls APB on the Kent Farn, in which Tommy Lee hand blasts the sheriff across the car and then immediately gets speared by Jonathan Kent off the porch. Oh, now it's a brawl. Awesome. That tackle was so cool. That was good. Mm-hmm. Lana nails one of the twins through the hand <laughs> inside, and we notice that both feel the pain from the impact. <laughs> and over in Luther Corp, Clark and Chloe navigate level three and are able to use Lex's ch- thumbprint to open the serum vault. However, they are unable to retrieve it because it's blocked by freaking lasers. So even without powers, Clark is still able to get the kryptonite solution. Also kind of crazy, Lex has rebuilt the entire testing program again. Back in season one, the experiment and testing, they were shut off shut down, which was seen in jitters. Yeah, Lex is just full evil. Like, well, <laughs> he's not full evil. He's, just he's testing dangerous drugs on convicts. Yeah. Yeah, it's not right. I'm pretty sure this is the episode where uh, Chris Sarah fell through the ceiling. Oh, God. Oh, on that hanging stunt? Oh, shit. Were oh. you right there? 
No, I was in my trailer. But uh, apparently, so he f- he fell off like 25 feet down off a scaffolding oh. or whatever. Oh, my God. And his body, more... and people my say it was, it was so terrifying because he was just like this. Uh, like it, it all the way breathe. knocked out of like him. i mean he couldn't breathe and every bone in his body was pretty much broken he had to go to the hospital and really recover even charlie's here that's nice it was it, it, it was more than that dude it was a warehouse and it was like 40 to 60 feet and he was on a decelerator how did he live he was on a decelerator so there was no pad and the decelerator failed right. so he hit Sit concrete Sit. oh concrete oh damn dude i don't they, know how he lived because they don't put a pad down that's why you're on a decelerator Anyway, I don't know if that's a part of the Did episode. that change after that? Were they? I, I feel like they I, would I, have like I, a fail safe in case that happens. Yeah, I mean, listen, when he when he ends up throwing Lionel off the building, um, I think it's the season. There's a dude who does like a sixty story decelerator, and there's stuff. There is stuff there, but I mean, like if the decelerator doesn't work, he doesn't right. survive. It's crazy, man. Those guys have such balls. It, yeah. And the decelerator, that's the thing that, like, when you're doing a, a falling stunt. Yeah. So you fall, and what it is, it's, um, it slows you down. Like, they dial it in so you stop, I don't know, an inch or six feet from the ground or a, oh, a 10 feet. That's and terrifying. it's designed to s- stop you. Oh. And it decelerates you. And what happened to Chris was that thing failed. Well, that's. Did you see the the fall guy yet? The Gosling? Not movie? yet. Well, that's uh, he gets injured, and that's how he in the very beginning of the movie. Like that was it was that that oh. thing failed. And there you go. Back at the camps, the convicts are able to take back control and tie up the kidnappees. The twins then create a force field to block the that. police who have set up a perimeter. However, their lack of serum means they won't be able to hold it for much longer. Clark cracks the plan to head back to the house, unbeknownst to the convicts, empty-handed. Clark hands over a suitcase containing a flash grenade that stuns Tommy Lee. In a fit of frustration, he hand blasts towards Clark, but ends up hitting the twins. Then Clark uses a sledgehammer to take out the house's electricity, rendering Tommy Lee's hand blast useless. After Clark knocks out Tommy, he does a call back to la- the la- a line Chloe used about turning the power off. But why did he just ditch Chloe inside Luther Corp? Hmm. Chloe shows back up to the Ken farm, congratulating Clark. Once a hero, always a hero. She reveals that while they were in the vault, somebody else was watching them via video feed. Well, how does she know that? How, I mean, how, did, how, <laughs> how, does, she, how does she know that? How somebody know was anything? watching us. Okay. Well, it's funny, too. Clark's immediate reaction is just going to Luther Corp. Not like, oh, we have to find out who it is. It just goes and yeah. must be lands one on Lex. Uh, Clark I'm takes punch Lex in the face. <laughs> Clark takes this information, heads straight to Luther Mansion. Lex asks Clark if everyone's all right, and Clark responds with his fist. Not only is Clark mad that Lex is testing on meteor freaks, but he also believes Lex freed Tommy Lee and his crew during his visit to Belle Reve. Interesting. Do you think that that was intentional in the cold opening? Yeah, that makes you think. Hmm. That little like bump. Yeah. Lex. After taking a left hook from Lex, he is walking down the hallway by himself. It is pretty. Yeah. I would say yes, now that you say it, yes. And after taking a left hook from Lex, Clark heads to the Talon uh, loft to finish where he and Lana left off. Clark talks about the uncertainty in his life, and then things heat up with foreplay to a tune of Coldplay. I thought when the camera was Jesus panning away Christ. that we were going to see Lex Luthor as someone <laughs> looking from the shadows. I did, too. I totally, I totally thought there was going to be a shadow in Someone's the window. Someone's watching us. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought it was, but it was just the neon. I like the fight side. with Clark and, and Lex, and Lex just kept letting him hit him, and then he punches him in the face, and it's just kind of like, Super oh, uncharacteristic, shit. Uncharacteristic, right? Huh? Super uncharacteristic for Clark to just But it's the only time he can fight. But like he can physically prove to Lex, like, hey, I don't have superpowers. Back the fuck off. Yeah, that's like, why he did it. Yeah. He's like, listen. Yeah. Uh, now hit me. Oh, I bleed. <laughs> yeah. I'm not are, are a superhero. You, Watch. Are, I'm going to yeah. hit you. Are you <laughs> yeah. done? Are you done looking <laughs> yeah. into me? Yeah. Closing thoughts. And how many episodes do you think Clark will get his powers back? Probably all of them. Next. The second <laughs> chance between Clark and Lex was very short lived in this episode. When do you think Lex will take the good guy mask off and go full heel? But why? I mean, listen, this is why I think your character survived so long on the show and you did a great job. Who says he's bad? Who says he's going to be bad? Yeah. See what I'm saying? But yeah. Everybody's waiting for There's it. some bad things and things, you know, escalate. Who, you're likes. the most honest character on the show. For the most, I guess, in a way. <laughs> no, and everybody's just whole, lying like, to you. He's got this whole testing going on. I, I, I do, like, but, you know, they've been, everybody's lying. Everybody's lying at this point. Everybody's lying. Uh-huh. Uh, interesting things Such of note. Such is life. Interesting things to know. This is the first time that Clark doesn't have powers throughout the entire an, an entire episode. Wow. Kristen Crook's name in the opening credits is fixed as it was spelled Kristen in the season premiere. Uh, Kristen, it's not 
What? It was spelled with it's, an E. It's Kristen, Kristen, not Kristen. Kristen. So it took I them in. five years to fix it? I've been saying it wrong this whole no, time. I think someone messed it up in this <laughs> opening credit. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Can you call, oh, can you can call you Kristen imagine? and ask her what she remembers? She's, she was probably, they spelled my name. Uh, Tommy Lee calls the twins Heckle and Jekyll the names of two twin cartoon magpies popular in the 50s. And now we are here with our top tier patron. If you join patreon.com slash talkville and you're a top tier patron, randomly could get picked to be on our show. And Justin is here with us. Justin, where are you calling from? I'm in Minneapolis right now. You seem very mellow today, Justin. Well, he's, he's in Minneapolis. That's well, you know, it doesn't get any better hanging out with guys you like and wow. got good weather. So your, good your basketball team's doing okay, so that helps. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, Justin, why Smallville? Why are you such a fan of Smallville? What brings you in? I feel like when you ask people this question, you're trying to figure out, why would you watch this show? No, that's not um, why I'm asking, but everybody has a different answer. <laughs> How old were you when you no, found the show? No, to be honest with you, so it started with my kids. We came in about season four, so we went back and watched you know, all, all the previous seasons on DVD. And then we started from, you know, they were probably like 11 or 12 at the time. I probably wouldn't have watched the show if it was just me, um, just because I, I kind of was like, oh, I don't know if this is my kind of show. But once we started sitting down and watching it, then I, I got to be a fan. Um, I think just the acting, the writing was really good. Uh, you know, on the podcast, we talk a lot about some of the stories, but I think it was there were compelling characters. The stories weren't always compelling, but the characters were always compelling. Oh. They did, I think the show did a good job. I mean, every film or television you ever see is really about identity. And I think the show did a good job of showing characters searching out their identity, their integrity. And I thought they filmed it well. I think it looked good. Yeah. They, it, the show looked good. What was your favorite episode, by the way? And what was your favorite storyline that you can remember? Even though it might not be the most spectacular one, I like this one. I liked Mortal because... Really? Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I feel like in every other iteration of Superman, Clark Kent is always the disguise. Way back from the George Reeves Superman, all through the Superman movies... He was always disguised as Clark Kent. And I think that Clark, you know, the, the Superman identity is not relatable. What, what is relatable, the fact that these guys took uh, Clark Kent and actually made him a real person. He wasn't the disguise. And that was what I thought was kind of a neat aspect about this show um, was we got to watch Clark Kent. And they did a really good job of keeping Superman at bay. I mean, yeah, it was abilities and things like that. But it was really the story. I think the story could have been told without the powers and without the abilities. The characters were compelling enough. We loved them, and we cared about them enough. And I think with more, you know, with Mortal, it, it, there have been periods in the past where Clark has lost his abilities. But this is the one. Like, will you love me with them? Will you love me without them? That's what he sort of battled with over the years. Is do you know? Will people watch the show? Will people like Clark Kent if he doesn't have? And that's what I kind of like that it's sort of woven throughout the whole story. I think that's a solid answer. Well, I do. It, it makes it, it, it makes sense. Now I like the episode better after you saying that. What <laughs> what um what would you give it ratings wise? Yeah. Score. What would you give it? How many roses? If if I look at just the episode itself, if you look at what actually transpired, it's probably a heater for me. Oh, <laughs> wow. oh even though. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. Your favorite, yeah, episode, wait a minute. <laughs> your favorite episode is a heater? <laughs> no, 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 no. So if you look at what actually transpired, you know, you have a guy who's just a regular guy been staking for someone who can get this crazy serum or whatever. The actual <laughs> That part of it I thought was okay, but what I would give it a solid two roses because you finally get to see, and Clark finally gets to see, you know, has that interaction with Chloe about, hey, I'm not just a meteor freak, I'm an alien, you know, from the from the previous episode into the new episode. Yeah, she, and she, just, she, does, she can't even really bring herself like, to see the word. Clark yeah. finally finds out what it's like to be a real boy. You know? Okay, all right, so. I could dig that. Um, did you watch all ten seasons? Yes. Yeah. What do you think the strongest season was? I liked three into four. Um, I thought that was really solid. Some of the other ones, I mean, obviously when you start getting the Justice League in there as a fan of that, those are some of my favorite seasons as well. But uh, I think the first three were really necessary to make it go 10. 
because, you know, we talk about a lot of the episodes that weren't so hot, but I think we, we bought the characters so much in the first three that we kind of sort of didn't mind some of the, the, the arcs and the storylines that would come later, you know? What do you like about Talkville? What is it about the Rewatch podcast that, that you like or, or don't like? Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I don't like about it. That I shit uh, on the show? No. That I shit on the show sometimes? <laughs> so, yeah, I actually, I wrote a song. I don't know if you've heard the song. It's on Spotify. I dedicated it to the talk to the talk bill. To start with Somebody Save Me? Somebody Save no, Me. No, it's always, always hold on to Smallville. Are you aware of this? Nope. As I producers of the show. <laughs> that is we awesome. We got to hear it. We should listen to it. It, it is dedicated yeah, Bryce, to the sure talk millions. What I like about the podcast, I like that you, Tom, are both accessible. That it's it feels more like a conversation more than we're going to go see a couple of big time actors tell us their thoughts and all that stuff. That would be more I, interesting. I like the, yeah, the, the community is great. <laughs> and it really just feels like we're all sort of, you know, uh, everyone's really good on, on on Patreon, you know, all the, the discussions that we have and just the community, the, how they support the show and that. I don't know. It feels real. It feels like we're, we're all kind of, I mean, it is. I mean, we just, one of the things that even at times when I'm like, ah, I don't feel like doing it or whatever, you're just like, Hey, just come talk to me. We're just going to come talk about the show. Yeah. It's it's, it's kind of like scripted. I love it. Well, look, is there anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? We're, we're honored and privileged that you're here and we appreciate you being a patron, supporting the show. It means a ton to us. And we say it all the time, but with all sincerity, the utmost sincerity, uh, it, you know, you mean a lot so thanks justin thank you justin hey i appreciate it it's it's just a it's a great i do a lot of driving for work so i listen to it most of the time you know uh rather than watching it and so it's a great companion uh to have and uh i just appreciate being here thanks for having me oh. and i think i'll see you in nashville are you gonna be in nashville i will be in nashville in next week right next weekend yeah not this coming we'll we can see you there after well within when this airs it will be long over but Yes, I will see yep. you there. I cannot wait. I don't know what this con's going to be <laughs> like, but uh, I'm excited. And um, Nashville's great. It's the um, the guy who did the Tidewater con. Yeah, but it's the uh, it's the capital of uh, Tennessee. Hot <laughs> chicken. Oh, God. <laughs> Country Just music. Time out for three seconds. <laughs> uh, when when women are getting married, they go on their bachelorette parties. Oh uh, yeah, it's the capital of bachelorette parties. Nashville. I really? saw some You're we going to see 30 girls That's walking. That's where my wife went to hers. Yeah. There you go. Great. So there you go. Justin, before we let you go, <laughs> say the magic words. Always. Stop. Ah, wait a minute. Small bills. Justin, uh -oh. you have to start with remember, folks. Oh, remember. Sorry. Sorry. That was my bad. Remember, it's not, folks. It's hang, okay. on, hang on. Hang on. Wait, 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 say it again. Say it again without them talking. I feel so actory. <laughs> Always remember. Sorry, gosh, <laughs> what the heck? Can I start now? now yes, you can start whenever you want. And okay. action. Talkville is brought to you by AG One. We talk about this so much on this podcast, and it's because uh, it, this is a product that just truly works for me and Tom and so many people out there who have tried it. Uh, you know, I can't stand the thought of the old ways of just taking all these pills every morning, these vitamins, these supplements to get everything yeah. you really need. And to me, with AG One, you just put the ingredients in and stir water it's water and the ingredients and you stir it and you drink it and it tastes good and you feel great and it gives me motivation it gives me focus it gives me energy this should be into your daily routine well and also like when when in, when i used to take a bunch of different vitamins i'd have to like pace them out and i had to think about what i ate before because they would hurt my stomach i can drink ag1 on an empty stomach I don't know about you, but yeah, I like absolutely. it. And I especially like it when I do travel because then I'm not eating the normal things that I have, but I know that I have that as a baseline to start the day. Yeah. Look, each serving of AG1 helps deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. And I'll tell you, with my stomach, the older I get, I like to have pro and prebiotics. They certainly work for your gut support. And having that in there, it's all in this one drink that's so easy to do. It's, it's a powerful habit that's also simply powerful it's powerfully simple is what it is uh it's pretty unbelievable and it's a quality product healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated the thought of taking multiple supplements mixing and matching pills and powders kind of like i said sounds exhausting and it is but just one daily scoop of ag1 helps cover my nutrient gaps and supports my mental and physical health without a lot of hassle it's just 60 seconds every morning i know i'm giving my body what it needs and setting up 
sustainable habits for the long run. If there's one product we had to recommend to elevate your health, it is AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash talkville. That's drinkag1.com slash talkville. Check it out. And now it's time for the hotline. Let's get on the hotline. Uh, Patreon.com slash. I thought the Tom. Tommy Lee guy, I thought he did a great job of just like being. That's what he had. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like yeah. using his space. Like he was, he did a great job. He got desperate as time went on. So it played yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Michael. Hey guys, it's Michael P from Texas. In the episode more, we hear Clark say, sometimes it's just easier to turn off the power. Guys, I kid you not. You know, I love Smallville. I paused the episode in the moment. I started to shake my head and I asked myself, why didn't they just turn off the power in the first five minutes of the episode and avoid all this headache in the first place? Rosie, help me out here, brother. Do I just need to suspend disbelief or am I going crazy? <laughs> uh, Michael, you're Thanks. shitting on the show. Um, <laughs> welcome to my world uh, at times. Um, yeah, I mean, look, you could always say, why didn't Clark just tell Lex the truth? And you could always say these things, but you gotta just let it go. It's it's your your build the whole idea of the show is to build tension between characters. That's it. I mean that's why you that's why you watch every week to somebody, see what happens. Somebody next. was wearing a suspend disbelief short last, last night. night. Oh, suspenders of awesome. suspenders. Heather suspenders. and Greg were there. Yes. Suspenders of disbelief. <laughs> Dude, this is this we're is, gonna we're gonna make suspenders. Suspenders. Here's Greg and Heather who were there last night. Hi guys, this is Heather and Greg from North Carolina. So we finally see the Fortress of Solitude. We were just wondering, do any of you have a Fortress of Solitude? either while you were filming or today. We want to hear from Ryan too. Thanks guys. See you later. My well, Fortress of Solitude love is, you guys. is my basement where I could just disappear and watch yeah. TV or movies and just turn off the lights and just chill. Yeah. Where's yours, Ryan? Mine? Your Fortress of Solitude. You don't have I guess it, I guess it's my car. No, I, your car? <laughs> for one bedroom apartment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> love you, Tom. Mine is... Um, Really, just when I go inside myself and I'm able to <laughs> and breathe. Also, Michael's basement and Michael's basement. <laughs> I bet, like taking, when a, drive, here, taking a drive by yourself or working out. I, I, yeah, I think working out. I mean, like, I have an office that I go in, and in, in the corner I do, you know, the the podcast. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't really have. I don't have like a spot. That's all right. I just try to breathe. Aaron. Hey, this is Aaron calling from Georgia about season five, episode two, Mortal. So did everybody just forget about the Stones of Knowledge? Because <laughs> Lana gave one to Clark, Lex had been hunting them, and all of a sudden, now that they've been united, everybody just forgets. See, that's what that you get existed. from paying attention. Like, do you think Lana ever asked Aaron. Clark, hey, what'd you do with that stone that I gave you? Just something that popped in my head as I was watching these Aaron, episodes. Aaron, you're like, right. They just disappear. Yeah. Thanks. Aaron, you're right. We agree with you. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, we're done with that storyline. But wait, was why did everybody want it? Well, it sounded well because we've talked to Alan Miles since, and it sounded like they also wanted to be done yeah, with it. Like, we got to get past. They're this. like, we're we're done. So that's it. All right. It is funny. There's no like a uh, dialogue about it though. It's just completely forgotten yeah. about. Remember those stones? <laughs> <clears throat> Whatever I, happened with those? stones? I also kind of huh? wanted to for Clark to show up at Lana's loft and her to have the TV on, and it was Jensen and Supernatural on TV. <laughs> that would have been, <laughs> awesome. been awesome. Hi, this is Margaret Morin from North Carolina. The guys that escaped from Belle Reve, did Lex have it planned to, for them to go after Clark, or did he just let them out? I uh, love the podcast. Never thought about that. That's well, interesting. Well, you know, there was no real eye. I mean, we can go back and look at it, but even no. when Lex bumps into him, there's no real eye contact of like, and they could have done that. I think whoever didn't. decided to do that is really smart because it makes you think yes or no right yeah. it could have not been lex meant someone random yeah yeah that's interesting I, I i don't know if we'll ever know here's stewie stewie what you got for us lewis lewis <laughs> any fat man <laughs> hey guys it's stewie from australia this question for both michael and tom in this episode you guys have a bit of a fist fight in uh Lex's office. I'm just wondering if uh, you guys have any memories of that scene there. Was it fun doing that together? Uh, obviously, you guys are pretty close friends, so I can imagine it would be quite fun doing that. Uh, also, just wanted to know if either Lex or Clark could drop any kind of uh, swear word or cursing. Where and what what episode and where would you put it? I don't really curse, though. 
I would probably curse when I was split in half or I was the bad guy. You were right about me all along, Mr. Kent. You I am the mother- effing. Right be- right I am the effing the- villain of the story. <laughs> right before you shoot the gun at Jonathan. Clark. It, yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Like, ah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or what about uh, when you hammer your sorry, hand? Because you don't yeah. have any powers. You just hammered your hand. Yeah. Fuck. Oh. Yeah. I was smarted. Hammered my hand. Hammered your hand. <laughs> Another t shirt. Just cat guys. daddy. We're just, we're just like hand hammering. Stickers and t shirts everywhere. Um, you know, but suspenders of disbelief is we got to do something with that. Cat daddy. Hey, this is cat daddy. Um, you know, you, you all were in this show for a long time and you're well known actors and you're, you're, you're kind of famous. <laughs> so I'm wondering, like, this, this feeling of wanting to be normal. Um, did you have this? Have you had this experience of like wishing you were normal? And if so, like what do you wish you could have done or could do that would be like a normal thing to do, like in the same way that Clark wished I understand. You were without power? That's a good question, Cat Daddy. I think, you know, if I wasn't an actor, uh <clears throat> I mean I'd love to be a musician. I mean, I would have loved to put more time into that, but you know, um, I don't know. Maybe be a you know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe be a teacher, like a like a drama teacher, or yeah, a, what's really what the question is. What is normal? Well, normal like people's normal jobs, nobody's, and nobody, I think it's more like anonymity. But nobody's normal. Well, anonymity is being a teacher, being a you know a, a fireman. Like you want to be a fireman. Um, I don't know. But nothing's normal, even if you're fireman. Well, or a teacher. being famous is abnormal. Yes, because you're meeting, people knowing you. People are are approaching you as if they know you when you don't need know them. Right. That's the biggest right. So exchange, a teacher, which is awkward, but you can also have that as a fireman or or hmm. a state trooper. It's just creepier if that happens. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. yeah. Here's uh, Ahmed. Hey guys, this is Ahmed from Calgary uh, with Clark and Lana. You know, finally reaching that next step and Lex, you know, going bad and season five being what a lot of the fans have been waiting for in regards to the main characters. It was one said that season five uh, would probably be the last season or a small blow was supposed to be a five year show. If that's the case, do you guys know how season five was originally supposed to end? If that was going to be the final that, season? Uh, that wasn't Ahmed. That was uh season five was so good that they, they gave us more seasons. Um, so season five had to be a great season. How um, does that work? So, yeah, because Al said that, right? Where yeah, that's right. They really tried, this was like the make it or break it, but are they writing 20 episodes planning to go on? Or My interpretation is, as you go in, it's different now. Now you go in and you pitch and you have to have your scripts, you have to have your director and your actors. And you go in and you go, here are what now is 10 episodes a season instead of the 22 that we did. Yeah. Back then what they did is they go, what Al was, what I think he was referencing is we have a five year idea. And once you get to that five year, then it's like, are we good? Let's figure out how we can make it last. What mm-hmm. turned out to be another five years. Yeah. But back then you had a five year idea, but you didn't have five years of scripts. Right. And so it's a little different now, but that's what I heard him referencing. Got it. And because once you get to the five year mark, then you can start selling the show in reruns. Because like, so uh, that's the financial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judd Apatow, he was talking about Freaks and Geeks, right? Where he knew that there wasn't really going to be a second season, so they packed all the good shit into one season. Oh, well, that's another way to do it. Uh, Bria, <laughs> yeah. Bria says they we missed waited. out on res- residuals there. <laughs> this show is sponsored by Better Help. Uh, Better Help is so important to me. It's so important to so many others out there. Uh, Ryan. Um, uh, it just, it's, it's something that I believe strongly in. They've been our sponsor for a long time and, uh, therapy truly helps and you should give it a shot. Uh, look, does social media make it seem like everyone else is living this fabulous, amazing life? Well, yours is not quite that comparison is the thief of joy and it's easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy from BetterHelp can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can start living your best life. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it's not just for those who've experienced major trauma. Therapy from BetterHelp can help every single one of us. 
If you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I think that's what's great about it. If, you don't, if you're not vibing with someone, you change it. There's no questions asked. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. Bria says we waited five years for Clark and Lana. Nowadays, TV couples get together after a few episodes and make love by the end of season one. So it feels special how the writers took their time with Clark and Lana. Do you guys prefer the old school ways of relationships develop on TV or the current one? Um, I, to me, it doesn't matter. I, I don't care if they have sex right away and they'd be, look, I've had sex before quickly with someone. And then we've been in a relationship for two years. I've also waited, you know, fifth date. And then it's lasted a long time. And it's sometimes it hasn't, if it, it's about chemistry and, um, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> To, I don't want you to talk about it. Tabish, <laughs> Tabish from London. Were you aware of Operation Picnic Under the Oak Tree, the fan campaign launched during season four, calling on the writers to get Clark and Lana back together? No, nope. I never knew that. That's wild. That's kind of fun, though. That's crazy. That's I'll cool. Hey, man, me. fans. You know, do you sometimes... think he would have been like, since Whitney's been gone for three years? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I can't believe she didn't have sex with Whitney either. Was she a... no, no, good girl. You don't see many of those anymore. Rosenbaum rating system. And now. Let's, you know, Rosenbaum this doesn't count, rating. but let's give Bryce. Bryce, what do you give it? Um, one. <laughs> Bryce, or Ryan. Brian. Uh, yeah, one. I'm going to give it a one. Tom. 0. 0.5. Ooh. I'm going to give it a 0. 0.5. I'm going to go with you on that. I'm going to tailgate. Uh. Death and save count. It just, it just death and save count. The freak of the week and those guys. It was like it was just silly. It was just a lot of silliness. Uh, zero dead. Three saved by Clark, uh, Lana, Jonathan, Martha. Two episodes. Ten dead. Five saved. One hundred forty said seven dead in the series. One fifty two saved. And now it's time for Ryan's favorite scene. Ryan's favorite. All right. Scene. All right, Ryan. All right. Scene one. Defeating the bad guys at the Kent house. Mm. Scene two, Clark and Lex fist fight. Mm. Scene three, Clark and Lana finally get it done. Ooh. You know what? <sighs> Those are three scenes put up against each other that aren't easy to choose from. I think there's two of the. It, I, like I think it's. I think it's one of two. There's two out of the three that are more that he. I know one he's not going to say. Yeah, one's pervy. He already sure. mentioned one. And I know he likes the long. I'm going to say the Clark Lex fight. and Clark fight. What do you say, Clark? <laughs> As he's looking at you. I'm, I'm trying not to make eye contact. <laughs> no. Come on. Because now you're here. I'm going to say. I'm going to go number one. I think it's getting rid of the bad guys. It's number two. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. F you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it for the episode. Uh, stick around next week as we uncover things in season five, episode three, Hidden. I have no idea what this is, what's going to happen there. Because it's hidden. Yes. Take the discussion <laughs> online. Let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast, at Talkville Pod. Show the support by please joining Patreon, patreon.com slash Talkville. And we love you. And um, and if you want more info, like uh, merch from the show or our hotline number, you can find all that in the description. My Instagram, Matthew Michael Rosenbaum. The link tree has tons of stuff, cameo, inside you online store, Talkville merch, all that stuff, plus uh, cons that are coming up for me and Tom, the Smallville con, so get tickets. And um, Bryce, you're here, so we won't see you, but why don't you say the famous final words? Always, hold on. No. <laughs> Isn't that it? Remember, folks. Oh. It's <laughs> like, how did I fuck that up? You fucked it up. <laughs> Remember, folks, always. Hold on to small. <laughs> now it's time for our shout outs to our top tier patrons who support this show. And we love you. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Uh, thanks for supporting this podcast. Please support us and get your name shouted out. And along with other treats as well. Let's do it. Leanne P. Raj C. Santiago M. Thomas Tom Turner. Shane W. Sophie M. Betsy D. Abby P. Ray H. Karen Apple M. 99 More. Lalani N. Brett G. Always hold on to Smallville. Esteban G. Charlie T. Garrett W. 
Bob K, Tom N, Jason W, Osama A, Glenda W, Lana rhymes with banana W, Nancy D, Brian G, YVR Grips, Anna M, Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P, Ryan R, Jordan M. <laughs> Jesus. Randy B. I'm just trying to be funny. Randy B, Craig G, Jorel, Heather and Greg, I made Talkville say butts, Brian H, Eric K, Kristen B, Darth Achilles, Finky, Early is on time. Mm. Mrs. Clark Kent. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Janet E. Deadvid. Generals uh, Theodore, Jim and J. Doug R. Carlos C. Tommy Zboson, 68. Ken, you know that Limbrick guy? Corey L. Mr. Home Arcade. Jesse C. Claire M. D. Brown. Karen Era M. Jules M. Eldon Supremo. Leslie V. Brian P. McBurch. Ginger Moose. Please remember Janice from North Carolina. Okay. Christoph S. Michelle M. Amanda Lynn. Is that the one that you play? Uh, no, a, no. Uh, Jessica B, Amanda Sebastian Lowe. F, Wolfie in the house. Uh, Deck Fiando, Flando. Deck Flando. Matthew and Lincoln B, Briar, Charlene A, The Coopers, Mary and Louise L, C, G O, Cindy C, and Nikki L. Shannon, Foe, Fan, and Tina E, Matt, Rick, Jen T. Oh, don't put them there. Just put them behind it. Type A in the house tonight. Yeah, I don't want papers everywhere. <laughs> Tina E, Matt, Rick, Jen T. Randy S, Cassie B, Brad A, Felicia R, Danny Mo, Maribel, J S, Mary K, Rachel D, Stephen A, Danger. When you're rich, you aren't crazy or eccentric. Rosenbaum fan, Sammy Sharman, Carrie Ann, the Alexander Castle, Daryl E, Spicy Chicken, Jenny B, 76, Anna B, Monica T, Jeffrey K, Pip Kenobi, Katya C, previously on Smallville, Matt C, Keith B, Major Paradox, Cookie K, Justin Patron, Saint of Smallville, Libertariat, Danny Z from Cleveland. Biagio C, Cal, Cal L38, Felicia B, J, Lady J, The Salty Ham, Murphy C, Late, uh, David L, Madison H, Mika J, Tori H, JD Turkleton, Kelowna A, Zeb R, Z, Wicked Stepdad, My Pup Select, Shelby Kara, Nat 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 Natalia, Natalia, Dr. Jace E A. Well, that was, I'm glad I didn't have to. That, that was, was there tough. There some big ones in there. That was tough. Suzy Q, Red Blue Blur 8. Uh, DRG, Dr. G, my, do I have to say underscore? No. Okay. My paradoxical me, Dominic D, Brandon C, <laughs> Ned L, Ridlurk, Jenny Lee. Ridlurk. Ridlurk. You're right. All right. Per six, Panna G, K Kurgan K, oh, Go, Go Hank R. Yeah. Go great. Hanker. Good one. Uh, and Naaman L. Or Naaman L. We love you guys. Thanks so much for the support. If we messed up your name, we'll try to get it right. But how are we going to know unless you call in? We love you. Be good to yourself. See ya.